Hello, this is Elijah Ignatieff, and I would like to speak about the concept of fear and the difference between an old paradigm economic system based upon fear and the new economic paradigm based upon love. Now, for many people, this may seem like a bit of a pipe dream, but if we don't look at the simplicity of it, if we don't look at the very beginning of the difference between the old paradigm and the new paradigm, the fear versus love, and have that as your primary choice before you start going into all of the other arguments and reasons and all of the things connected to that idea, start at the top and then make your choice. And you're making your choice about what you want to participate in, what you want for the future, how you want this species to be. Do you want to be involved in a paradigm that's focused on fear or do you want to be based on a paradigm that's focused on love. Now, at the beginning, it may seem a bit like a, whether an arbitrary question or a dance into a vision of something that you think is far away and not attainable. So one of the first things to address is you have to address your belief. Is it possible? You have to believe something is possible before you are willing to go there. And there's the fear of all of these things happening right now. If you look at your life, how much fear is in your life? And how much of that fear is real? One acronym for fear is false evidence appearing real. And that's a very good breakdown. False evidence appearing real. Meaning it's not actually true. And so when you can get a whole bunch of people to believe something that isn't true, that isn't good for them, they can be manipulated into doing things they would not ordinarily, ordinarily do. And so the thing about when you make someone fearful is they're, they're not reacting with the same part of their mind that when you respond with love. You gotta get that, right? Like we're, we're coming from different parts of ourselves. If we're in fear, you know, we're worried, we're doubtful. We're always wondering when the next thing is gonna come and hit us. And it's this kind of fight or flight, looking at the environment. And you're always trying to see what's coming at you and you're looking to defend yourself. But if you're in love, you're, you're in love with your environment. You're in love with the people around you. You're in love with the life ahead of you. You're in love with everything around. There's such a difference in a human being when you're centered in fear versus centered in love. And only you really can make that choice to be in the paradigm of love. You can't kind of join something, participate in it if you're fearful. It's not going to happen. So you, as an individual human, have to decide what are you going to do with your life? Who are you going to be? We've grown up with this war propaganda. We've grown up with all of these heroes and stories and illusions around the concept of war and that war actually has to exist or does exist or must exist. And this is all within the mindset of every human being. What we need is we need to see that war is like a disease that can be cured. War is not necessary. We're all around the planet now. We reached a certain level of consciousness where most human beings do not want or believe that they have to harm someone else to go get their things so they're going to be okay. And that's the essence of most of these stories. Stories of the past are human beings who violently take from other human beings. And if you look around at our laws, if you look around at our bearing in life, I think most human beings do not want to violently take things from other human beings to get them. It's as simple as that. But as you get into larger and larger 
numbers, and then you have leaders or control mechanisms that organize those numbers, then seemingly all wisdom, all intelligence, everything goes away because someone up there, some groups up there want to go get something over there. You can give them a name, but whatever they do, they're trying to deceive all the humans to believe that it's okay. But the fundamental thing, excuse me, is it's not okay. It's not okay to harm other beings with intention. That's our law. You know, we should all be able to live a life where we are not being oppressed by some system or person or anything. All human beings, I think, will agree to the equality that we don't want to be harmed with intention if we're not doing anything against the law. If everyone is living a loving life and we're doing good things for people, why are we going to be punished? So the old paradigm, which we come from, is about extracting resources. It's about gaining control. It's about militarily, fundamentally organizing humans in order to get a whole bunch of stuff so that a small group of people can benefit and many just pay the price. There's no intelligence, there's no wisdom, and whatever the news, whatever the stories, and whatever is the manipulation behind all the scenes are the same groups of people who think they can get away with it, but now the cat's out of the bag. Now I'm not the only one seeing it. Now there are billions of us and hundreds of thousands of them. And that's what you have to understand about fear. Those hundreds of thousands want to get fear into the billions because then the billions act stupid. And then the hundreds of thousands get what they want and the billions suffer. We're not just here on this planet to live the life we thought we were supposed to live. Those days are gone. Whatever this crisis has done, it has shown everyone that the world actually can stop. But now you have to look at who is making it stop and then who is benefiting from it stopping and what are they trying to do? And you have to look closely because there's a lot of disinformation and there are a lot of people talking about little points here and there but what you need to understand as an individual human being is that you have the right not to be harmed by an oppressive system with intention to do harm to humans. That's against the law. And what I'm seeing on this planet is there are entities, beings, organizations, groups, people, I don't know. I don't want to give a name to them because then the fight starts. It's this, it's this, it's this, it's them, it's this, it's this. No, I'm just identifying the problem. And if you disagree with me, you're a fool. If you side with them, you're a fool. If you protect them, you're a fool. You've been fooled. You think they have some sort of authority over you and me and everyone else, and they get to dictate what happens on this world, where the resources goes, and who gets what. Nah. I'm not giving my authority to them. I'm a sovereign being. I'm not saying I'm more than anyone here, but I'm saying I'm a sovereign being. And I get to write, I get to speak, I get to communicate to my species. Now you may or may not agree with me, but this is for the first time me speaking my truth very clearly to the species. 
I'm not doing this for self-aggrandizement. I'm not doing this so you can all go, hey, look at that guy. I'm doing it because I'm standing in my truth. I know what is true. I know what is happening, and I'm saying it to you. I'm sharing it with you. I'm sharing knowledge. I am your brother. I am someone on your side. I'm someone who has studied, who has researched. I don't have to go to a university. I don't have to go anywhere to get my credibility for my assertion of truth. There's nothing between me and God, nothing. No government, no priest, nothing. My spiritual path is my spiritual path. I do not need any other entity in between me and the source of all of existence. And if you don't believe in God, you're a fool. Because if you've ever had an experience of any type of connection with the Almighty, you don't need to read a book. You don't need to do anything after that. You just go, okay. I'm in. I am. I am an individual expression of my own identity. We call it human being right now in 3D, wherever this is. But there are other dimensions to this existence. There are other beings that are watching us. And they are trying to assess who we are as a species. And when they look at us, they're going to see that we are insane. We are killing our world. We are desecrating our Mother Earth, the very source of our life. We are, we are hurting Mother Earth. We are like cells in the minds of God. We have our own consciousness. We have our own inner authority. And you have to make a decision. Who are you going to be? What are you going to stand for? And what is your truth? What are you going to speak about? What are you going to read? What are you going to look at? What are you going to share? Who are you? Are you a planetary guardian? Do you feel in your heart that we should be in alignment with universal laws so we can be in balance and harmony with everything around us? Or do you just want to get stuff? Get stuff, consume stuff. Get stuff so you can, what? This is a wake-up call. This is one human being speaking to another human being, you. All of us want a loving life. All of us want to be loved. And it's within the capacity of our world right now for that to happen. There's enough food for everyone. There's enough water for everyone. There's enough room for everyone. There's enough work for everyone. And we're exploding as a species. We are geniuses. We have artists. There's so many beautiful beings on this planet doing incredible things. They need to be supported. They need to be the ones that are the way showers, not these politicians who don't take into account the needs of the people and the needs of the children and the needs of everything. We need wisdom, we need councils, we need the grandmothers, we need the indigenous leaders, we need the people who hold the wisdom of the land to be in charge and to make good decisions so that we all prosper in balance with where we are. This is not a violent uprising. This is a peaceful demonstration of our right to exist and our fundamental laws of the land that have been coverted by unknown sources. 
but soon to be removed. We are going to get help. There are other beings, other intelligences, other forces far more powerful than those that control the planet at the moment. They are there watching, but we have to stand up. We have to claim our sovereignty. We have to be the ones we've been waiting for. Each of you, each of you is a powerful being. Each of you is a powerful Jedi Knight. All you have to do is step up into it. All you have to do is claim your inner authority, connect to source and say, basically, I'm in. And you will be a hub of power, a light that's connecting you to a grid of Christ consciousness that other prophets and spiritual masters have come here to help us to activate. Each of you knows through your intuition, the direct knowing of why you're here and what you know to be true. That is what you follow. Do not follow anything that goes against your own inner heart or your own inner wisdom or your own inner intuition. You have to claim your own inner authority and be the highest that you can be and to draw the shadow patterns to see how you have been hurt and traumatized by life and to heal those patterns. And the best way to do it is to listen to one another, to listen with compassion, to hear the hurt and the pain of the other human being and just pay attention and be silent. And as soon as that person hears that you care, senses that you care, knows that you care, they are healed. We heal each other. We are instruments. We are vessels. We are the connection between Mother Earth and Father Son. Each of us, a divine spark. Each of us has the capacity to do unthinkable, creative things. All we need is the right environment, support, and love from the people around us, and everyone will thrive. There's a fear virus on our planet. It needs to go. And you, you are so valuable. You are so beautiful. All we have to do is start seeing each other as that. Create a whole new world. If you've listened so far, thank you very much. I love you. We have a great future together. Blessed. Blessed you be. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed.